Hey folks, Evil Pajamas here, and I'm going to be sharing today a Civ 6 deity strategy that I think is the easiest way to remember how to play early game deity and get set up to win outside of just winning on turn one with an exploit. So if you've never seen Game of Thrones or never read a Song of Ice and Fire series, then this won't make any sense to you. But really all you have to do in the early game to avoid getting overwhelmed by the deity AI is while you're making your decisions, you just always ask yourself, what would Littlefinger do? And that's season one through five Littlefinger or book Littlefinger, just definitely not season seven Littlefinger. So before you say that is the stupidest thing you've ever heard, let's quick take a look at the bonuses that the Deity AI gets for combat and for starting units. So the point here is, is you are not going to do what you did on earlier difficulties of building up an army and fighting the early game AI yourself. You'll get absolutely destroyed. I'm not going to fight them. I'm going to fuck them. That's what I know. That's what I am. And only by admitting what we are can we get what we want. But the thing to remember is all the AI players are the Ned Starks of Civilization VI. They are stupid. And I don't mean that as an insult. Uh, he's, you know, a very honorable guy uh, if you're a Ned Stark fan. I'm just saying in terms of being strategic, the AI just is coming in. It's, it's the, you know, their surprise war is not a surprise at all. And, it, you know, they telegraph what they're, what they're going to do. And it's, and it's pretty easy to trick them. So the first thing to remember is if you can get up to friendly level with the AI, they are not going to attack you. Unless you do some, unless there's some other circumstance where you provoke them and then, and then they'll be able to attack you. So basically, if you can get up to that friendship level, you're going to get like at least a 30 turn window where you can, for at least for against that civilization, you don't have to worry about them piling up their troops on you and uh, ruining your day. So to do this, you want to pile on as many Lady Boner or Broner points as you can. So you want to send a trade delegation. On turn one, which they'll accept on deity, I mean on turn, the first turn you meet them. And whatever their little quirky fetish is, you are into it. If you love building boats, I fucking love building boats. If you want all the cities by mountains, you can have them all. So, anything you can do to improve that relationship with them within reasonable bounds, you're going to want to take that opportunity. Uh, there's a couple of civilizations that aren't great for that. Uh, Persia comes to mind. Cyrus is a poster child for the criminally insane. For one, mainly because uh, his quirk is declaring a surprise war, so uh, I, that's what he likes. So that obviously is going against what you want to do with your strategy. The second is be ready to switch production quickly. So you're going to want to keep an eye on the area around you. Uh, you know, obviously you don't want to allocate a whole bunch to military because you're not going to overwhelm the, the deity AI, but at the same time, you need to be ready with defenses. So you may have to switch, uh, in like incompleted, uh, uh, incomplete non-military projects for military projects, or if you find the area around you is clear, you can do it vice versa and switch back. It should be super obvious if the if your nearby uh, AI is going to declare a surprise war, uh, they will send you know three probably usually anywhere from three to five of those initial warriors that they receive uh, down like pretty much at a beeline for your border, and then if one of them gets there first, they'll just hang out there. Like it's 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 really apparent. Now, the third thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to bluff or get in the way of their incoming units as much as possible. Um, bluffing works a little better. What you do is you bring, you know, one warrior or uh, like build one warrior and a slinger out and you just sort of wander them around in the area uh, where they are sort of coming through. And the computer's dumb and they don't realize that they could easily crush you. They, they think this is enough of a deterrent. So if you do this, and going back to the first point, if they dislike their other neighbor, you can buy yourself enough time that they'll just decide. Like, the, the AI just loves getting into wars for the most part, except for a very few civilizations. So they'll decide to attack the other neighbor if you just bluff them into thinking that you're going to be 
not as good of a target, even though you're by far the best target on Deity because you don't have any of those starting bonuses. So if you have stalled as much as you can and you, uh, it looks apparent that the, the AI is not going for this, then um, you can sort of dovetail off of that um, wandering around and bluffing strategy. And what you want to do is you want to position your unit to split the enemy army and get one of them to chase you. So I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to cut to the video part wh where I show this happening. So if you can split a few of their warriors off, it will be much easier to defend your city, presuming that you selected a defensible position, which ha which is going to generally be one that has, um, you know, choke points, uh, uh, terrain that's favorable for defending, so, you know, so you're going to have either coast or uh, rivers, um, rough terrain. So if you were flipping back and forth early on and monitoring the area around you, you might have been able to get, been lucky and, and churn out a second city or something like that, um, you know, but so whatever you were sort of relying on and you're gonna wanna adjust to whatever city-state bonuses you happen to get if you met, a, met, met any city-state first, city-states first and the terrain you have, um, you know, resources around you and that, and that thing, but, what, what you're going to want to do is basically you're going to want to churn out as many archers as you can. This is obviously like everybody sort of knows this, but you'll um, you pump out archers and you'll but you'll want a couple of warriors because uh, eventually they are the AI will just throw pretty much all of their units at you and, and they won't leave really anything back. So you can just sit there and once you've wiped out their uh, wiped out their attackers you'll want a couple of warriors because you're going to want it to actually counter attack and and take their cities um raise them uh pillage loot whatever whatever you want to do there and counter attack now it's it's also likely on deity that they they may have uh city state allies you always want to focus the um the AI's actual units and not the city state ones because one they could drop off the ally could drop off and then you just don't they aren't like aren't going to be attacking you anymore and two the uh, the city state units can't take your city if there's no actual civ there to then come in and and take it um so they can bring you down to zero but they'll just keep attacking it for no reason and they can never take the city so obviously they can pillage your improvements and such but um but yeah, so they are not in a threat in a way that you're going to lose your city. So you can see um, here, I'm playing on the East Asia map. I've had um, other videos showing play on this particular map. I like it. Um, and it's just, um, it's easy for me to sort of like uh, use to, to sort of explain some of these concepts. Uh, the other thing to, do, to note uh, about your starting area is even though like there's that sort of like, it's like, expanding or zoomed in fog of war where you're not supposed to, be able to tell where you are on a map you can always scroll over to to the left or right or you know or south north whatever and you you'll be able to see a border along the fog of war if you are like near the end of a the end side of a map on certain on on certain um maps if they aren't like round maps so keep that in, in mind um Sorry, round, I mean, like, from the east to west side. So um, so that's one tip for when you're starting out. But anyway, uh, I, I'll show the rest of this on the, the counterattack here. Uh, probably won't comment much for the remainder, but you'll see sort of what I was talking about as far as the, them not leaving anything really to defend their own position after they've exhausted their, their initial attack. So if you like the video, please click like, and if you'd like to see more content like this, please hit subscribe. Uh, I'll be silent from uh, here on out, but you can see some more of the counterattack playthrough here if you just want to watch um, video with no uh, babbling in the background. So, all right, thanks for watching. Uh, Evil Pajamas out.